Hello, everyone. Welcome to SFC Exclusive. On today's show, we are pleased to welcome Professor Matthew Samini, Executive Director of China European International Business School, Africa. Thank you, Professor, for joining us today. We know China has remained committed to high stance of opening up. How do you think China's commitment will influence foreign enterprises? So the, the, there is no doubt China is probably the most important economy now globally, and especially also from an African perspective. So we want China to be open. We want a very strong Chinese economy, because that is very good for, for the world. And I know that China has been opening up and it's also a very strong, they have a very strong relationship, especially also across Africa. So we all want China to stay open and they're doing a very fantastic job in terms of uh, attractiveness to foreign investors. So as I said, uh, China remains the largest trading partner of Africa, especially the exports from China to Africa. Uh, I mean, African businesses, entrepreneurs, they're all into uh, businesses in China. So absolutely, China is very important to the world. I mean, take any manufacturing product, uh, you're likely to find its origin from China. And in Africa, uh, most importantly, uh, China remains very, very, very important. You mentioned that Africa is a major partner of China. How do you view the relationship between China and Africa, especially considering the evolution of trade relations over the years? What are your prospects for the future of this relationship? Absolutely. I think that is a very good question because when you think of China-Africa relations, initially people, most people will think of infrastructure, uh, the Chinese supporting infrastructure development in Africa, and then they think of trade. Uh, those are the two major areas that people will not traditionally think of. But I know there are other areas beyond um, actually that. Now, if you look at trade, the, there is um, very much increase in China's export to Africa or Africa's import to China. I was looking at the uh, the statistics. And in 2003, for example, I think the sales actually import from China increased to, I think it stood at 282 billion US dollars. I mean, what that tells you is that the Africa's import from China is actually growing during the conversations between the African leaders and the Chinese uh, authorities. I think that is the, the trade balance actually needs looking at. But of course, there are other areas, especially in terms of education, and that is where we come in as well. Besides trade, in what other areas do you think China and Africa can further enhance cooperation? So I think there are quite a number of other areas. For example, when you take education, I know China provides a lot of scholarships to Africans. I think in terms of destination, China is probably the most, the largest de destination for African students because of the scholarship. So China has already been supporting Africans. And then of course, the, we have uh, the China Europe International Business School, um, where I am the executive director also now located in Africa, where we bring our executives and entrepreneurs from Africa to China to expose them to basically Chinese business and management practices. But more importantly also, we are now seeing a lot of Chinese executives and entrepreneurs. We bring in them from China to Africa because they are also interested in business opportunities in Africa. So we are seeing through this collaboration, we're seeing a lot of investments from Chinese entrepreneurs in Africa. And so the educational space, but also I think for me personally, uh, one of the areas that I think Africa should collaborate more with China is our policy level in terms of poverty reduction, because China has been able to uplift a significant number of its citizens 
uh, from poverty. And this is what we need from Africa, especially through agriculture. China has very advanced technology in agriculture. I know it's happening. The uh, cooperation between China and Africa is happening uh, in the uh, in the field of agriculture as well. But we need to see more of that in agriculture and also technology. And the final area is the arts and culture as well. You mentioned that an increasing number of Chinese entrepreneurs are interested in establishing businesses in Africa. What suggestions would you offer them? What opportunities do you see in this endeavor? Absolutely. And that is why we are actually here. One of the roles we play as a, a Chinese business school in Africa is to connect Chinese entrepreneurs and African entrepreneurs. There are Africa is a very growing market, the huge opportunities uh, compared to other parts of the world. And uh, because also there are a lot of problems that need solving. So we need a Chinese businesses. But I think one of the things that we always want to encourage is partnership and collaboration. So when the Chinese entrepreneurs come to Africa, instead of trying to do the business on their own, because the Africans are in those spaces already, they're trying to do their business, but the Africans don't have the sort of resources the Chinese have. And so the Africans are not able to scale up. And so in order for the Africans not to see the Chinese as competitors, we always encourage collaboration and partnerships. So when the Chinese come in, Chinese entrepreneurs or businesses, I think my advice is, for them to identify Africans or African businesses in the industries they are interested in, build some sort of relationship and collaborations with them. Guangdong is a major economic powerhouse in China and maintains strong relations with Africa, particularly South Africa. What is your perspective on Guangdong's development in this context? Now, when people in Africa, when you say I'm going to China, everybody thinks you are going to Guangzhou because that's what, so Guangzhou, it's almost synonymous to China in Africa because that is a province that most Africans know. And it's also the province that I think in terms of opening up of China to the world and also to Africa is at the forefront. So Guangzhou is, or Guangdong province is very important and significant to Africa in terms of trade. But also, I think importantly, I'm also seeing now, because quite a number of our alumni from Africa who go to Guan, uh, Guangzhou or Guangdong province are also now interested in building partnerships. So they have partners in China that actually manufacture products for them. They bring some of these uh, manufacturers from China to come and set up industries with them in Africa as well. So the province is basically very essential in terms of connecting Africa and China. What role does the Canton Fair play in fostering trade relations between Africa and Guangdong? Uh, absolutely. It is very much important. I know quite a number of Africans who go to the Canton Fair. In fact, this year, even some of our alumni and students are currently there for the Canton Fair. I think the Canton Fair serves as a platform to exhibit, to show to the world um, China's industrial capability, uh, especially across different industries. And for Africans also, it gives them the opportunity to be able to sample, to see what the Chinese are doing, to see what is available, to build network and relationship. So the fair is absolutely important. I think for me, I would have loved actually maybe to do some mini fair in China. I know we have in some countries in Africa where uh, we have some sort of Chinese companies coming, Chinese fair. But uh, I think beyond the Canton fair, maybe the organizers of Canton fair can think of probably doing some mini Canton fairs across maybe different continents, like in Africa, have a Canton Fair there. So that's actually my thinking. But absolutely, it is a 
a very important opportunity and platform to connect African entrepreneurs and businesses and the Chinese counterparts. We are curious, have you ever attended the Canton Fair? Yes, I have. I have once. I have been there once a few years back. In fact, we're even thinking now as a school because we basically represent China in Africa in terms of uh, entrepreneurship education, executive education. So we're just, as part of our strategy, we are thinking now of participating in the Canton Fair from next year and to be able to then uh, provide or enhance this platform, this connectivity between the African entrepreneurs and then the Chinese uh, businesses. So I think from an African perspective, the Canton Fair is absolutely essential. We need a fair. As I said, the future of the fair in terms of the, uh, the Guangdong African trade relation, that's what I would love to see. It's a little bit more focused on Africa. How do I uh, want this to happen? So that after the fair in Guangzhou, there could be a follow-up mini fair in other parts of Africa, like in West Africa, in South Africa, in North Africa, something like that. Yes. So that is actually my thinking. Given your experience at City University of Hong Kong and the familiarity with the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area, how do you assess the Greater Bay Area's development? For me, is it when China opened its door to the world, is actually through the Hong Kong Macau and the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Bay, especially I remember those days when I was in Hong Kong, uh, Shenzhen, Guangdong. So, Guangdong used to be almost integrated. So it's easy for the world to actually do business with China through the Guangdong, Hong Kong, and the Macau Bay. So I think it's a very important area in China in connecting China to the world. And I can see this as a gateway. I always call it as a gateway of China to the world. And some quite impressed and very happy to see all the developments actually taking place in that space, uh, in trade, in technology, in finance, and also leading the China's uh, opening up to the world. Do you believe that the Greater Bay Area will contribute positively to trade relations between Africa and Guangdong? Absolutely. I think from an African perspective, that's, that's why I said earlier on that when you think of China from Africa, it's Guangdong uh, or Guangzhou uh, as a city. And so the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau Bay, it's very important actually for trade in Africa. Uh, what I would probably love to see is even a, a, a lot more industries from the area setting up in Africa, moving manufacturing to Africa. Now we all know that the cost of manufacturing, especially labor cost, um, has increased or is increasing in China. So there is a, a lot of relocation of industries to other parts, mostly Southeast Asia, but Africa is very much open. And so to strengthen the collaboration between the Guando, Hong Kong, Macau Bay, and Africa would like to encourage a lot of industries from there, the industry that want to relocate to basically think of Africa. We assume you have made several visits to China. What differences mm -hmm. have you noticed over time and what are your overall impressions? I think, yes, I've seen a lot of, almost like, I think I've been my first visit to China, I don't remember, but it's over 10 years ago. And looking back now, and I've been telling people that when you go to China, you see how China has developed over the past at least 10 years or so, 15 years that I know of. I mean, it's just amazing. It's amazing, the technology, the infrastructure, the transport system, everything. I mean, it, I don't think any other country in the world could have achieved that within this relatively short period of time. I don't remember exactly the date for my 
first visit, but it's over 10 years ago. But my recent visit was actually January this year. And I'm actually coming back, going back to China next week with almost like 50 women entrepreneurs from Africa, from both Ghana, Nigeria, where we spend one week in Shanghai, and then we go to Hangzhou, Alibaba for three days, and then we go to Yiwu for three days. And then following that, I have another almost like 25 executives from Ghana, Kenya, and Nigeria, uh, where we'll be spending one week in Shanghai. So I do go to, I have a lot of interaction with China and also connecting a lot of Chinese uh, executives with African executives, and also entrepreneurs from Africa and China. You have been actively promoting business cooperations between African countries and China, assisting African entrepreneurs and supporting Chinese businesses expanding into Africa. So in your view, what are the biggest challenges faced in these endeavors? So of course, to do business is actually number one, it, Africa is far away from China. And then you have, of course, initially you have all the cultural differences, like language differences, but those are narrowing. The cultural language is through education. And that is why institutions such as SIPs and are actually very important in actually bridging the gap between China and Africa. Of course, there are quite a number of challenges, as I said, language, uh, culture, but I think significantly it's also the uh, uh, let's say the payment payment platform and and the reason why I'm saying the payment platform is that because currently most trade, especially between China and Africa, is still done through the U.S. dollar. So my sincere hope is for RMB to become probably the dominant currency in trade between Africa and China. Uh, that would definitely make things a bit easier. Thank you, Professor, for sharing your insights. Thank you. Indeed, there is great potential for cooperation between businesses in China and Africa, and the Greater Bay Area serves as a crucial gateway connecting China to the world, showcasing China's commitment to global openness. That's all for today's show. Thank you for watching. See you.